Let us now consider the definition for vertical asymptotes. Okay. So for vertical asymptotes, uh, we're going to express this definition using the if-then style. So let f of x be a function if for all n greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that if 0 is less than x minus a, which is less than delta, then f of n, x is greater than n. Then the limit as x approaches a from the positive of f of x goes to infinity. Now, what's important to note here is that we don't have an absolute value sign. Why is this? Well, if I have my function, and this is my value a, I'm approaching from the right. So my x values, x is going to be greater than a, or x minus a is going to be greater than 0. Okay. And what we're having is we're going to have a vertical asymptote. We're going to go up to infinity. Okay. And no matter how high you want to get, you tell me an n, which is a specific height, n. I just tell you get a little bit closer, and you can get above that value n, where the curve goes up and up and up and up and up. Okay. If this is true, then our the limit as x approaches a from the positive goes off to infinity. And if for all n greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if zero is less than a minus x, which is less than delta, then f of x is greater than n. If that's true, then the limit as x approaches a from the negative f of x equals, my, equals infinity. What this is, is now I have this a value. I'm coming from the right side. It goes up, and it keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Okay. And we have our similar definitions for our uh, limits that go to negative infinity. These give us our asymptotes. Okay. So let's take some time and try to prove that an asymptote exists for a couple examples. Okay. So we want to show that the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive of 1 over x is infinity. The limit as x approaches 0 from the negative, 1 over x is minus infinity, using the formal definition. So we start by picking n greater than 0. As n does not equal 0, there exists a delta greater than zero such that delta is less than one over n. Taking the reciprocal gives one over delta is greater than n if x is less than delta then 1 over x is greater than 1 over delta which is greater than n thus we have shown that the limit as x approaches infinity, or x approaches 0, sorry, 0 from the positive, 1 over x equals infinity. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this sentence approach. And the reason I'm not a huge fan is, of it is because intuitively it doesn't make sense to me. We're trying to follow it, and it's just like they're pulling it out of nowhere. I don't get where the majority of the work is and where it just came from. So I wanted to show you this sentence structure one, um, because this is how you typically see it in a textbook and it's first exposed. But let's do our second limit by breaking it up a little. We would like to show... that for all n less than 0, there exists 
a delta greater than zero such that zero is less than zero minus x, which is less than delta, implies that one over x is less than m, which is less than zero. Okay. So that's our goal. Well, one over x is less than n if and only if one over minus x is greater than minus n. If and only if minus x is less than minus one over n. We now have the bound that we would like. We have some bound on x, and then if that bound, or bound on minus x, if that bound is true, then we get the result that we'd like to have. So let delta equal one over minus n. Then if zero is less than zero minus x, which is less than delta, one over x is less than n. Therefore, the limit as x approaches zero from the negative of one over x equals minus infinity. We have our result.